Uh, so then the business saying the federal government is planning to borrow $750 million on behalf of states to stimulate local economies in Nigeria and support vulnerable household consumption. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, made this known in Abuja on Friday at the inauguration ceremony of the Federal Steering Committee of the Nigeria COVID-19 Action Recovery and Economic Stimulus. According to the Finance Minister, the Nigerian government is going to borrow the money. The federal government is considering the causes and consequences of civil unrest and COVID-19 in the country. Zainab Ahmed emphasized that the consequences will be too high if we ignore the root cause of rising civil unrest in our country. We must therefore fashion out ways of ensuring that post-COVID-19 is not injurious to the Nigerian people and the economy. That those are the minister's words. And now to speak on this, we are joined uh, via telephone by economist and public affairs analyst, Walang Olojede. Good to have you, Mr. Olojede. Yeah, good morning. Nice to be here. Right, so let's go straight into the matter. Now, more borrowing in spite of our indebtedness. At uh, this time, we are taking $750 million. Uh, Does the cost okay. justify the move? From, from, from the choice of words of the minister, I don't think it's actually uh, a new loan that we are trying to get. It looks like an approved loan that has been negotiated that we are trying to assess. So assess means to just provide the, the, the requirement and then you get the loan. But that, 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 that is not the most important part of it. I think the most important part is, number one, we actually indeed need to stimulate the economy and to also be able to reach out to the most vulnerable in our society. Mm -hmm. It has been predicted that, especially in our part of the world, the post-COVID effect on this vulnerable will lead to massive unrest in our parts of the world. I think we are beginning to see that. Mm -hmm. right. We now need to shift our efforts onto ensuring that when this money is actually accessed, it will get to the right junctions where it will have the desired effect. We have seen what happened to the way the palliatives were handled. Politicians and civil service may end up cornering this money and it may not achieve what it is meant to achieve. That is the biggest problem we have right now. Let's shift our emphasis onto that space. All right, uh, let's talk about a uh, way forward, or pr practical solution rather, in, in your words. It looks like this loan is already negotiated, it's just waiting for us to you know, uh, take the money. Now, what better ways should the government consider in its efforts to regrow the economy in the aftermath of you know, the COVID-19 pandemic and even the protests that we saw recently? We, there, there are several other things that we need, we need to do, but most of them do not lend uh, themselves to uh, microwave uh, approach. We are not prepared. We don't have those results. So my, my advice is that as we, have, we have a budget. We have an entire year ahead of us. And we have planned to borrow this plenty, plenty money. Why that is the plan? As the year itself uh, is, is going on, we need to now start coming up with those innovative ideas that will ensure that if we plan to borrow $6.1 trillion, we end up not borrowing more than $2 trillion or, 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 or $3 trillion. Mm -hmm. One of it is to mobilize private capital. There are private capital in this economy. Right. To, to also be able to willing to do more concessions that, are, that are, are, are transparent so that the money we are spending, we are borrowing to spend on infrastructure, we actually be taken over by the private sector and, and, and that will relieve us of, of the dead body. All right, thank you so very much, economist and public affairs analyst, Bolamo Lojide, for your insights. My pleasure. My pleasure.